Good day, Life Groups. It's uh, good to be with you. And this week, we're going to get stuck into surviving no man's land. You guys have just come out of three weeks of talking about Galatians. And you guys have studied Galatians chapter 1, 2, and 3. And the great thing about this chapter, it, these chapters, is it's all about grace. And uh, Paul contrasts this way of relating to God based on grace through faith and the, the other way, which is based on law, or our, our own works. And so that ties brilliantly into the series. What I'm going to ask you to do today is to start getting stuck into um, surviving No Man's Land, this actual series, and really speak about, um, maybe from a personal point of view, uh, what God's been doing in in your heart in the series so far, um, how you've responded to it, maybe what your your biggest area of No Man's Land has been during the course of your life, and maybe what the area of No Man's Land is that you're in right now. We're also going to speak about your reaction to No Man's Land, which is how you specifically have responded to it. And I discussed uh, last week, the, the Sunday before the one you just heard, you've just heard Trav the Sunday before that. Um, I've discussed um, the seven different responses to No Man's Land, and so that's the Mr. Active, Mr. Passive, uh, Mr. Me, Mr. Not Me, uh, all those kinds of guys. And so you're going to talk about how you find yourself responding to that. And really what we want to do is we're going to help you uh, create awareness around the, your own struggles and how you respond to it. And then we're going to call you into a position of, of grace and faith, uh, how you can develop faith in God uh, in, in His grace in order to not just survive no man's land but to thrive in it. So far you would have seen four sermons in our series, Surviving No Man's Land. Um, in the first sermon, Ross spoke about uh, righteousness and this gift of righteousness we have. Uh, in Hebrews 10.14, uh, the writer says that by one sacrifice, well, by one offering, by Jesus offering his own life, God forever made us perfect, even as we're in the process of being made holy. The thing about no man's land is that uh, when we're going through it, we're, we tend to think, hey man, this has got to be my fault. Maybe I'm not perfect with God. Maybe I'm not right before Him. That's why I'm going through all this stuff. But the reality is that we are righteous. And the more we believe that we're righteous, the less uh, troubled we are. Because it's not a, what we are um, as we go through it. Because it's not about a breakdown in a relationship between us and God. It's uh, about something else. And it's really encouraging to know that when we're in the middle of no man's land, our toughest season, God looks at us, He sees us as righteous, as perfect in His sight. Um, the second week, uh, I spoke about resurrection life, and uh, we used that whole analogy of how we have this, uh, the, the resurrection life of God, the light of the gospel, in these fragile clay jars. So our lives are fragile, uh, clay, they're easily broken, easily chipped, but the, the spirit of immortality lives within us, and that helps us to understand how we're in no man's land, and to have hope that despite our frailties, despite our weaknesses, God's strength is actually made perfect in our weaknesses. Uh, In week three, I spoke about uh, living in the balance of grace and faith. That God wants us to approach Him by grace, but that we need to respond to in faith. And there's this great drawing which you're seeing right now, that there's God at the top, uh, us at the bottom. He relates to us by grace, and we relate to Him by faith. And it was really a sermon calling people into a position of faith, that in the grace of God, and really to have confidence that what God provided for them is sufficient to get them through every circumstance of life. And lastly, in this last Sunday, you would have heard Trav speaking about uh, the, when we find ourselves in no man's land, we, we can get into this place, this danger or this, this temptation to go to alternative belief systems. And basically what that is, is we start thinking maybe there's something outside the gospel that I need to lay hold of in order to get me through this. And so we almost lose confidence in the gospel, we lose confidence in Jesus, and we place our confidence in something other than Jesus to get us through and help us thrive in life. And so these are are the the sermons you've heard so far, and we're really asking you to discuss this. And what I'm asking you to do is to take a risk with your group and uh, be really honest with them about where you've been at. I just want to say to groups that uh, something that's really important in group dynamic is something called confidentiality. In other words, whatever is shared in the group stays in the group. You don't repeat it to your friends. You don't repeat it to people who weren't there. Um, you get to talk to people. Uh, whatever the person says stays in that group that night. And that gives people a confidence to be able to speak openly and share. share. I, I also like to say that there might be some things you don't feel comfortable to discuss with your whole group 
But think about it and pray about one person, maybe your life group leader or a friend in that group, uh, one person that you could go to and share your, your struggle with so that you're not carrying it on your own. Someone else is carrying it with you and someone else knows what's going on. There's great power in living open lives with each other and in being vulnerable with each other. I'm really excited about uh, this series and about what you're going to be discussing tonight. But for the first uh, question, we're just going to get the ball rolling with a really open-ended question which says, um, what part of surviving no man's land, what part of the series has spoken to you the most so far? Because it's always really revealing what God's been doing in your heart in the series and it helps other people in your group get up to speed with what God's doing in you. So have fun tonight and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the series.